Welcome to the LA Praise Network. We're here in conjunction with the Linda Lee Foundation. We have a panel of experts on issues concerning our community. The first gentleman we have is Pastor Moore. We have Pastor Barrett, and we have Mr. Edwards and myself, Marlon Petaway. The topics that we're going to discuss today deal with the following concerns. Churches and school leadership adopting and being intimately responsible for at least five children, K-5 through college. Businesses lending more support to the children. Recycling the black dollar more in and out of our community. Organizations and concepts for athletics in our community. Churches, community leaders, gang members, current and former given a real voice to express positive choices for themselves and their children. A unified approach to community development. Increased tutoring and homework help. Those are the topics that typically concern our community. So I'll open with the first question. We'll start with Pastor Moore. The first question is, how can churches assist law enforcement with the needs in the community? Uh, great question. You know, I, I think um, uh, one of the things that was stressed um, in, in a lot of the public appearances by law enforcement and community leaders was that uh, law enforcement was taking on too much of a responsibility in the community, trying to be parents, counselors, and other things. You know, and I think that um, uh, uh, the black community has a responsibility to and uh, of itself to, to police itself. I think that we're the ones that are best suited to be able to embrace our young people and begin to teach them and dialogue with them about what it actually takes for us as a race, as a nation of people, to be competitive. You know, and I think that is where we're going wrong. Our communities are suffering, right, you know, uh, economically, but in part because our minds aren't moving in those directions. Our minds, you know, aren't, aren't being steered and directed in directions that cause the neighborhoods to prosper and businesses to flourish and people to move into realms that deal with technical and, and uh, engineering uh, schemes of things, you know, so that, that, that the talent within the community has a chance to be able to be um, uh, brought forth and allow it to shine so that we as a community can start living off of what we have the ability to produce. So I think the church in that sense, you know, has now to step in. And I think that one of the things that, um, uh, not to speak too long, that, 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 that the Bible is asking us to do is to recognize that this is a Joshua era and that what we need now uh, is a fresh mindset, a new mindset, a, a fresh way of doing things that helps promote the values uh, that sustain who it is that we are. I think we need to uh, be encouraging uh, visionaries to come up so that we can begin to frame a future, you know, that, that, that African Americans can actually begin to move into, you know, starting with our kids. Um, I, I definitely, you know, just to piggyback a little bit off of uh, what Pastor Moore was saying, um, in regards to the community, to the churches, I think that in this hour as the church, we need to be more active in going outside of the church, actually. Um, Jesus did a lot of street ministry, you know, and in that street ministry, he met the needs of the people. And the people are hurting in the streets. People are wounded. Um, people are just suffering um, economically. So many things are going on. There's so many issues within the black community. There's so many issues within our nation. Um, and now the devil wants there to be a racial divide because uh, a house divided cannot stand. But in the midst of that, the church, this is an opportunity for the church to shine the light on the problem. But if we stay inside the building while the nation is just fighting and warring against each other, then where is the salt that's supposed to come in the midst of of, uh, it's like that light. Where's the light that's supposed to come in the midst of the darkness? Where's the salt that's supposed to show up as the tenderizer, as the seasoning uh, uh, to make things better? And I think that this can be an opportunity for the men and women of God that represent Jesus Christ to come into the inner cities, to, to really show forth that, listen, we're here and, and, and uh, back in the 60s and back in the civil rights era, the church played a vital part. The Meetings were held at the church. The church gave the direction as to where 
the, the, the march would be, uh, where the agenda was set. You can't just have any and everybody putting in their two cents and say, okay, let's go this way because you're going to have people going this way. You're going to have people going that way. And the, um, to, to take up arms or, or the violence is not the approach. So as the church, I believe that it is an opportunity for God to really manifest himself in this hour, but it's going to take collectively for the men and women of God who have been called by God, as Pastor Morris said, the Joshua generation. Um, one thing about Joshua and his generation, you know, they were the just do it generation. They didn't sit around and say, oh, you know what we're going to do. They heard um, the complaints of those who went into the land and say, oh, the giants are there and it's too big and we're like grasshoppers. But the Joshua generation was the generation that said, I don't care how big the giant is. God has told me to go and slay the giant. So we are facing a, a, a demonic presence that God has given the body of Christ the authority. I'm not expecting the world to bring change. I'm expecting the people of God to bring change because God has given them the insight for that change. Mm -hmm. What I've just heard is absolutely true. What I've learned in the last few days, seeing the problems throughout the United States and the world. The church is the teaching foundation for the new families of today. The first thing we should learn is we as black Americans are killing each mm. other faster than mm. other races Amen. are killing each other. The church of today should call out to his people, his congregations, to bring those arms to the church, take them out of your home, and we get rid of those weapons that are out there and they're in the church. Those people that are sitting in the congregation have arms at homes. And once they leave those churches and they have a problem in the parking lot, they take out a gun and they'll shoot another person. So we have to train our new young adults of today, which I've seen with my own eyes, taking three steps and having somebody walk in front of you that you don't like. I've seen with my own eyes just a couple of days ago. And it requires that we get rid of those weapons. You gotta get rid of the weapons because that's the biggest thing that we have going in the United States now. It's, it's, the new young youth, it's not the older ones, it's the younger youth that are killing each other and those that are not of the black community. We have to stop. I mean, we have to get those weapons out of those hands and we have to demand that those companies that are coming into our communities that are selling the weapons to the people these gun shows and et cetera, they need to be stopped because that's where your leakage is. They're coming in, you can buy them on the internet now without any type of credentials or, or paperwork that's needed. So we have to protect ourselves without a weapon. And I've done it all my life. I've done it without a weapon, use words. And God will protect you all the way. You don't need that weapon in your hand. I never heard of God taking out a weapon and, and shooting another person. I've always saw him use words. Mm -hmm. Love, and that's the main thing. We have to love each other in this world today. Our nationality has to love, not only each other, but other races as well. Mr. Mm -hmm. Edwards, you, you brought about a key point, <clears throat> excuse me, education being key. And us not ignoring the issues that are within the community. And one of the things that leads right into question two, since we recognize as a community that education is key, what can school leadership do nationwide in order to create synergy amongst the youth in our community? Pastor Moore? I'm not really sure that, um, that they can. I don't think um, there's a nationwide agenda that would um, address the problems of our neighborhood. That's why I think um, other components have to come into play. You know, what we fight um, is something that 
goes back to us being first brought here. I mean, we, we were brought here um, and oppressed. We were brought here through violence. We were um, made to stay here through violence. And we've lived a violent history, you know, in terms of us and our oppressor. And I think that um, us as a race, you know, we are and have unique differences, right, in regards to other races. I mean, when we stop and we look at, um, at, at, at who we are mentally, I mean, when you, when you come and, and you consider slavery and how families were broken up and how men were made to sleep with other women in order to be able to produce more slaves, you know, how you didn't know who your parents were and the family concept, right? You know, I, I mean, all those things for three, four hundred years, right, are, are impacted in, in our psyches. You know, the concepts of victimization and, 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 and servitude, you know, are impacted into our psyche, you know, concepts of low self-esteem, you know, and I think that what we need, right, Right, has to be brought forth out of something that we give to ourselves. And, and so I think that there has to be an examination of, of the ills, you know, especially on the psychological level, because that, to me, is where our problem is. We've been brought out of bondage you know, as slaves, but now we've got to get the bondage out of us. You know, the Bible has a particular passage, Solomon said, woe to the day or woe to the land uh, when the slave becomes king. You know, because the mentality of a slave is not what's needed to be able to thrive in freedom. You know, it's like, like pulling somebody out of jail that's been in jail a long time and then expect them to, to make it outside, right? You gotta have halfway houses that sort of help them transition in their thinking. I think a lot of our perspectives, a lot of our understandings, a lot of our definitions of life for us as a people are born out of our oppression. And now we've got to stop for a minute, right, and take a look at the newness of life and say, okay, there's a future for us, right, but where are the architects of that future? And I think that the architects of our future can't be the general public school system, but I think that leaders have to emerge, right, that have concepts of what it means for us to be a people into the future, us policing ourselves, us marketing ourselves, us creating finances within ourselves. I think these are the topics that have to be addressed, you know, but they have to be addressed in forms in the black community, and I think, again, that churches are one of the best ways to do that. We had a program that we ran with Dell Computers for a while where we were teaching kids uh, character building skills on laptop computers supplied by Dell, and at the end of the course, the kids got to keep the computers, right? I think these types of programs that bring us together to allow us to be able to instill in our kids a sense of hope, a sense of value for our communities, right? When you don't understand who the people were that helped make you, make it possible for you to be in this community, then sometimes you'll devalue you where you are and you won't treat it with the respect that's necessary and I think that we as a people don't feel like we have and hone anything but we are a great people you know with great power and great potential and I think we need to tap into the resources of us through vehicles that we create I think that's what we need to do um, you know they do it every other group has vehicles you know the Jews have vehicles that they use to promote outside of the school system uh, education um, amongst their youth Right? Every other group does, but we don't. And I think that you know, it's incumbent upon us to recognize that of all the groups of the people in the world, we're the youngest and, and we, have, um, we have a responsibility right, to pull ourselves together to develop who we are as a people and have a national direction and a course and a mission in this life. You know? But it has to be done, I believe, uh, by us. Let me interject right there. <clears throat> Pastor Barrett, you and I met in Compton. I was just sitting thinking about that. <laughs> We were side by side, me in the classroom, you having the experiences in and out of the prison systems, in and out of the schools, talking to the youth. Are the school administrators and leaders listening to what you bring to the table and people like you? It's funny, as Pastor Moore was talking, I was just sitting here thinking about that. Um, you know, when my wife and I first went into the schools in Compton, um, you know, we had a love and a passion to speak into the lives of the youth. And, you know, some youth were labeled as troublemakers. Um, some were labeled as being too fast. Um, some were labeled as gang members. Some were labeled as, you know, um, that one is going to go to prison. That one is going to go here. And this one is going to get, you know, and we began to get to know the youth. And in the midst of getting to know them, we began to start to understand what was really affecting their character. 
And uh, it's one thing, and I, I applaud the, the school system, but I also know that the schools can only do but so much. When that child goes to school, it's like sending your child off to daycare. Mm -hmm. And the child is off to daycare, and then all of a sudden, uh, it has to return back home. Mm -hmm. And there are issues at home that are really affecting the youth. So, for example, uh, one young lady, she comes to school and she gets dropped off at eight o'clock in the morning and the school administration labels her as, you know, uh, fast. She has an attitude, you know, she, she's just, just um, failing and nobody really takes the time to find out why. And I watched my wife build a relationship with this young girl and she's 16 years old and in building that relationship she found out that she was molested by her mother's boyfriend Boy. and in molesting the child the child has become confused because the mother told the child that's what you get so now this child has no protection from her mother. The school can't understand why she is a troubled youth. Here comes my wife with an opportunity to invest some time in her, and she began to ask, and then all of that which had been suppressed is now on the surface, and now you begin to say, this is why this child is acting this way. But when you look at it as a whole, yes, the education is good, but then what about that life skills enhancement that's going to help that child as they go through that community? What's going to help them young men as they deal with the gang violence when they get off the bus? They're safe in school, but once they come out of that gate and they have to really deal with reality, and I think that overall, the school system, the parents, the police force, uh, the community has to help raise and shape and mold that child because guess what? It's not just the child staying at home. It's not just the child staying at school. He's going to go in the community. So whatever happened to the village raising and helping that child? And now we live in a world where, it, listen, it ain't my child, so I don't care. You know, you see on social media um, a, a young woman just getting beat down, stomped and kicked, and people just walking by as if they don't even see what's going on. So we've become desensitized to the actual moral rights of what is going on in this nation, and I just fear that we're going in the wrong direction. And one of the biggest mistakes that the schools did, they removed God. Mm -hmm. And when you remove God, I don't care what the establishment is, the workplace. When you begin to remove God, you're basically telling God, I no longer need, need your yeah. assistance. Right. So you begin to welcome every other unfiled, unclean thing. When I was growing up and going to school, and I graduated in 1990, but I can't recall going to school. And I lived in Harlem, New York, Inglewood, California, over in Hartham, California. I don't recall going to school and ever having to go through a metal detector. And when I go to the schools in Compton to visit these kids, you have to go through a metal detector. I mean, it's like going through airport security at a school. And it's sad, but this is the direction that this nation is going in. Mm -hmm. Mr. Edwards, thank you, Pastor Bear, for that reflection. Yeah. You've been in Inglewood, South Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, for a long time. What are some of the issues and concerns and potential solutions that you have seen or could see with regards to educating our youth in this area? My goal is to set up perfect example for the new youth of today is be able to, like myself, I'm able to go in any community and walk tall. And I just did it the other day. I was in one of the major department stores and I saw a young man that was very highly intelligent in his response to me. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming in, etc. And I asked this young man, I said, would you be interested in a better job that you have right now? He said, yes, sir. I gave him one of my business cards and I said, you call me and I'll guarantee you a job. And he says, I'm going to do it as soon as I finish my shift here. 
I make it a habit every day of going out and finding that youth or that adult and giving them an opportunity in this world because I've been very fortunate to be able to travel the entire world, this world, South America, Canada, Japan, Korea, Europe, France, and every place I've gone, I've made friends. And the nationalities that I come in contact with in, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, I've walked with the kings, I've, I've been in Ebenezer Baptist Church, I've been all over the United States, and I've always tried to reach out and grab a youth and bring him up and teach him what I know mm -hmm. or my profession. And I have a profession that's, that's awesome. God gave it to me. That's, that's all I can say from the entertainment industry to the security industry. And I'm capable of hiring people that I don't even know mm -hmm. and giving them an opportunity. And I've taken a lot of people off the streets and I feed a lot of people that don't have food to eat each and every month. I feed them out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I try to show those that are out there, you can do the same. And I take them by the hand and show them how to assist another family that you know is without and help to bring them up. And the children of today, I try to set an example for that child. I never let them hear me say anything derogatory at all in words because they don't forget those words. Mm -hmm. I always let them hear something positive, positive. And yes, my eyes are open in the community. Why aren't there other businesses and other men and women doing the same? I saw it for myself just a few days ago. With 23 young male and female black youth were given scholarships mm -hmm. to go to college all over the United States, from Spelman to Morehouse to right down here in San Diego University. I saw that with my own eyes. And those scholarships were paid by the people, by the people, so we have to help each other. And that's when you go back to the Jewish nationalities and the Asian nationality, they help their own. And we as black Americans, we have to do the same. And we have some brilliant young men and women out there that are brilliant, that are, they just need that opportunity. And when you see it, then you give them a hand, Amen. you know? Mr. Edwards, as God has blessed you as Pastor Moore, Pastor Barrett, as God has blessed you all. We all can see the needs in the community. We don't need to turn on the news, listen to the radio. It's evident. It's playing itself out. It's, it's biblical. It's written. One of the things we want to know, and we're going to start back with you, Pastor Moore, because you mentioned this prior to in very meticulous detail. Are we able in this economy to encourage the youth in our community as well as those returning from the military to pursue careers in local and city government up to, but not excluding, law enforcement that will promote change. Right. Um, my spin on it, um, I believe we could, yes. You know, I definitely believe we could encourage individuals to get into different areas. But I think my spin on it, you know, coming from a biblical perspective, you know, when the Bible opens up, um, when the first, the first time God actually speaks to man biblically recorded is in the book of Genesis in the first chapter in verse 28. And God says, I bless them. Now be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth, right? Uh, as if to say, because the word bless, you know, implies two things. One, that, it, that we've been given something, and two, right, according to the Hebrew, that we've been authorized to release it. So, in other words, God has impacted each and every one of us with something, and now he's telling us to be fruitful. You know, the concept is like, uh, say, I'm an apple tree, right? There's apples on the inside of me, but I can't see it, right? And the idea now is that it's been put there, not by me, you know, but by another. And my job now is to find what's on the inside of me put there by the one who created me, you dig? that's not for me. Because see, if you notice, right, apple trees don't eat apples, 
but this is what they're called to produce. Lemon trees don't eat lemons because what's in them isn't for them, it's for us, right? So I think each and every one of us is carrying something, you know, and, 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 and our lives were meant to be answers to problems in our generations. And part of what we're supposed to be doing is being fruitful, discovering what it is that God put in us for us, because I can't find it when I'm selfish. I can only find it when I have a mind and a you know point of view that is about us. You know, so I believe that God uniquely has um, prepared us. You know, to me in life for such a time as this. I don't think there's anything that passes the mind of God or the ability of God. And God already knows what's going to happen before it happens, and is in position to be able to put Moseses and Joshuas all around us and then activate them. You know, uh, based on His call. And I think that those of us who feel a passion to do something need to look to our creator to discover what he has impacted in you that you can use to impact life to make a difference. I think that differences are made from our gifts, our talents and abilities when they're uh, in tune. When I operate or when a person operates in his God-given gifts, his talent or abilities, then something moves beyond the physical. And now we enter into another realm that allows us to be able to fight. Because see, to me, a lot of what we're coming against, right? If I could get a baseball bat and beat it down, I'd get it, right? But it's not physical. The ideologies that we fight, the concepts that we fight, right? They're all unseen, they're ideas. And you can't shoot an idea and stop it with a gun or a bullet, right? You have to stop an idea with a better idea. And so I think that, you know, it's, it's incumbent upon to be able to, especially black Americans, right? Uh, you know, and anybody who's in Christ, you know, we're, we're looking for the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's God's divine instruction is navigating us through the pitfalls of problems. You know, when we look for divine intervention, divine instruction, then we start to pave ways and, and, and create roads and paths that lead us out of things securely. You understand me? But don't uh, uproot things that still need to be in place. So I think that um, um, uh, uh, at this time and place, right, I think that uh, it's, it's an inward move that we've got to do. We've got to stop avoiding uh, the problems, you know, and start being a part of solutions. You know, we need to come and start looking for our leaders, you know, instead of trying to be one without understanding what a leader is. You know, I think it's time for uh, us as a people uh, to slow down and take a good hard look at ourselves, right, and, and see what we can do to better us, because we are twisted and broke, but at the same time, we've got all the gifts, all the talents, all the mental and emotional power to be able to change us. And I think that's what we need to do. That's that's the key. Pastor Moore, just to support what you're saying, ever since I've met uh, Pastor Barrett and listening to some of the audiology that you've produced on some of your CDs, I think Pastor Barrett speaks directly to that in his development with his ministry and his wife and with the recent uh, release of some of his literary mm -hmm. uh, effects. Could you go in more detail about that? Um, I just think that, you know, coming from the background that I come from, um, I didn't go to seminary school and get to where I am. You know, I came through the ranks of the streets. And I have an understanding of that mindset. And a lot of times we look at people and we try to figure them out. Well, what makes them tick? What causes them to want to sell drugs? What causes them to want to go and rob somebody? Or you know, and, and, and we don't really know unless we have been placed in those shoes. And so I just sit here and I really believe that, um, as Pastor Moore was saying, a lot of us, God has already equipped us with the full potential to actually uh, perform in our greatness, but we just don't know. A lot of these young black men and, and young black men in the inner cities and, and so many other places, they have grown up around what I call a generational curse mindset. Mm -hmm. And they adapt to what they see. They adapt to the street hustler. They adapt mm -hmm. to the pimp. They adapt to the gang member. They adapt to the violence because this is what they have been uh, uh, birthed into. And you take that same person that gets up every day and, and, and he goes to cop them drugs and he goes to weigh it on that scale and he takes all those risks and, and ducking and dodging the police and all of these different things. You take that same person and say, hey, listen, instead of selling them drugs, mm. why don't you get into the clothing business? Why don't you take that same drive, that same yeah. hustle? You know you can get into the real estate. They don't know that. Right. So they see the quick money and they 
AAC. I got to get it by any means necessary. And the truth be told, they are young entrepreneurs, but they have to shift the product to another product that is not against the law. And I think that they have begun to uh, 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 have no fear, no reverence for incarceration and things. So they're, they're building more prisons. They're locking them up for more time, but there still has not stopped the mindset, mm -hmm. as, as, as Pastor Moore was saying, because in their mind, they're believing I'm not going to get caught. So I'm going to continue in my criminal activity and I'm going to get what I believe is mine. In all reality, that's not who God created them to be. But nobody has spoken into their life. And, if, if, and, and, and then again, a lot of the pastors have spoken into their life, but they are so entrenched in that darkness, they just can't hear it right now. But I'm a product of what happens mm -hmm. when somebody yes. gets quickened by that word. And that word will quicken your spirit yeah. and that word will convict you and that word will tap you into the source, which is God, the creator. And once you tap into that, it will begin to reveal the darkness to you and you begin to say to yourself, now I have have a desire to come out. Now I need somebody to teach me how to come out. When I walked out of prison, my family embraced me. And, and what was most importantly within the community, the church embraced me. And being in church and, 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 and being embraced by the church, what it became was a safety net to say, listen, we love you enough not to allow you to go back out into the same things. Listen, God has given you a call and God has per So they begin to, to, to cultivate what God had already planted on the inside of me. But now if the door is closed and I come knocking on the door and nobody's answering it, and then the door down the street is open and it just happened to be the local drug house or the local gang, then I'm going to feel they will accept me. And I think this is the mistake that the church is making. The church is actually turning away the Joshua's, the mm -hmm. Moseses, mm -hmm. and they allowing the yeah. gangs yeah. to get a hold of them. But in this hour, as the people begin to cry out, as the people begin to moan, God is raising up men and women of God that's going to make a difference. They're not trying to uh, 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 rob the congregation of their finances. They're in it because God has really put something on the inside of them, and they want to see change in the land. So I, I, I believe the answer to your question is yes, it can be done, but there's a method to how yeah. it needs to be done. Yeah. While we're on the subject, supporting that, I am just overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge that has come into play so far. But I am short of saying this. I understand that in your time being here in South Los Angeles, respecting Pastor Barrett, respecting Pastor Moore, there is a whole lot of opportunity that you gave to see our community grow while simultaneously focusing on those opportunities that could be in development from a youth perspective. Can you elaborate on that? I'm going to I'm give gonna... you an example. At my age, I'm 77. Mm -hmm. I set an example for this community right here where we're sitting right here. And as I was walking in front of a drugstore many years ago, there was a young man who reached out and said, wow, I see you all the time. What do you do? Mm. And I says, well, I represent a number of world boxing champions, and I'm on my way to Las Vegas. And he said to me, I'm the best salesman in the world. This is what this young man, I never knew him from Adam. So I said, yeah. He says, I, I really need an opportunity. So I left and came and sat at my desk. Steve. Hmm. And God told me, go back hmm. to that young man. Great. And I said, you said you were the best salesman in the world. Mm -hmm. He hmm. said, yes. I said, would you like to go to Las Vegas? He said, yes, sir. I didn't know if I'm Adam. Mm -hmm. I took him to Las Vegas. I had over $50,000 worth of merchandise on display at the Orleans Hotel, representing world champions. I said, you're the world's greatest salesman. Mm -hmm. He said, yes. I said, this is yours. 
I don't know this guy. This is yours. Let me see what you can do. I went in and watched the boxing event. When I came out, he had sold so much <laughs> merchandise. To this day, to make the story shorter, he was sleeping in the streets when I first met him. Today, I put him in one of my buildings where I'm at. He lives on, on the sixth floor of the penthouse lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He has his own car. He didn't have a car then. All he had was a bicycle. He was sleeping in the doorways here in Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And today, he's in the church helping others. Bible study every Monday and constantly going. He's never looked back. Amen. That's just one of many. Well, well, wow. Amen. That is how I believe we are coming to a solution-based format, bringing the church into the community, yes. not expecting the community to come to the church all the time. Yeah. And so we would like to thank Pastor Moore, yeah, thank you. Pastor Bynum, and Barrett, and Barrett, both <laughs> of you guys, for bringing that work to us. And Mr. Edwards, you yeah. bring a historical uh, impact that I don't think a lot of individuals really are aware of. Yeah. And I think your presence would educate a lot of individuals that are in your position to share what they offer mm -hmm. in a fearless, God-fearing format. And that's what I think more than anything. You've got to have a good examples. Set an example and reach out and grab that person and bring them that's to right. the top. Mm -hmm. That's been my goal. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for tuning in to the L.A. Praise Network in conjunction with the Linda Lee Foundation, sharing solutions to the community for our community nationwide as it relates to black churches and how we can make the changes necessary to grow and develop our youth and future to become. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 She kept the